Tonight I'm in Dalwini, which is pretty much the middle of Scotland, as you can kind of see around me. It's kind of like moorland, just wasteland sort of thing, so it's perfectly dark skies before. Been here a few times uh, and it's been amazing. Uh, there's Northern Lights active tonight, Milky Way core might be coming, well, should be coming up. Should be clear, it's a bit 50-50 just now, but I'm in kind of the best place if it does get clear. But yeah, amazing sort of area. So I've arrived a few hours before just to kind of walk around the roads. And I mean, you can see the roads are kind of nice S-shaped, so it'll look really cool under the dark skies. Um, I've, I've, I've filmed here previously, or took pictures here previously. There's a famous tree over there, Dalwini tree. It's just a single tree. Um, in the moorland I'll pop a picture of the northern lights that I've captured there um, but yeah I've arrived a few hours early so I might send the drone up muck about for a bit and just wait for darkness so it might be the first time capturing the Milky Way core this season so looking forward to it and yeah enjoy the drone footage of this amazing Scottish landscape <laughs> So because I've got a wee bit of time before any sort of stars come out in the sky, I thought I would give a quick minute or so talk about the Sigma 14mm 1.8 because I've used it for, when did I get it? I got it about September time and oh my god, it's changed my sort of photography. It's pretty much the only lens I really like to use for photography now. So it is pretty big and bulky, uh, pretty heavy. Um, I'll pop the stats up somewhere on the, on the screen how heavy and big it is um, because it is a bit of a chunk so I pretty much don't use a ball head with this because I don't trust ball heads unless you've got a huge big one um, I just use kind of like a, my panoramic he head which is uh, which you'll see in most videos which is that so you know it just fits on like that which is absolutely fine um, because you know it's sturdy enough what I really like about it is it can it feels quality obviously it cost it cost me 1399 pounds which was quite expensive for a piece of glass uh, but that's what photography is um so it's got this kind of i'll try my best to show it um movable kind of handle so you can put it in landscape portrait pretty quickly and pretty easily which is really good f 1.4 which is fantastic obviously for astrophotography really really sharp it just absolutely sucks light in like a black hole. Uh, pretty much the shadows just come to life. All you do is in Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever you use, just put shadows up and then the foreground is just there. And the noise capability of it is just fantastic. You just, you don't really have to reduce too much noise. Um, it's, what I really like is it's got like a focus lock on it as well. So if you focus to infinity, obviously by using live view or a far away farm or car light, whatever, Focus on infinity and then just switch on the, the the focus lock, which is just on one on the side, and then that's the focus locked for the night. So you know it's on infinity, and no matter what you do, if you bump the focus ring, it's set on that focus lock into infinity, which is really really good, really good peace of mind. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just an absolute beast. It obviously, 40 millimeter, it sucks in the whole landscape, which is my sort of photography. I just like capturing the whole landscape, the whole wide view. So it's perfect for me, f1.4, it's pretty good for obviously low light as well. If a low light uh, videography, so I capture some of my videos with this lens uh, because f1.4 and it can pretty much see in the dark. So yeah, I can't recommend this enough. It's the, by far the best astrophotography lens I've used because I used the 14 millimeter f2.8 for a while. That was the Samyang and that was an amazing lens traveled you know Norway Iceland uh, Tenerife all with that absolutely brilliant but you can just see night and day the difference of the foreground is just is just more lit up and less noise so I can't highly recommend that enough and um, definitely look at that if you're looking for a wide angle astrophotography lens just be careful it is very heavy so if you've got a small tripod or a small ball head you'll need to upgrade that because it is a bit of a chunk uh, so I can just fit on, I, I've tried it on the Nomad Sky Tracker and it's just a bit sketchy, it's a bit scary. 
Um, just because that's a quite a small sky tracker, so you pop it on it and you're kind of like hovering over it, going, oh, please, please, please finish the exposure before you fall. Uh, so I use it on the Ioptron, which is just a bit of a bigger sky tracker. Just I feel a wee bit more safe on that. So hopefully tonight I'll get this on the sky tracker capturing the Milky Way if we get the clear skies. Um, but yeah, other than that, I can't recommend it enough. I bought it from where did I bought it from? I bought it from Wex. Um, Pretty much it's the same price all over. I look at mpb.com because I mostly get most of my lenses from there because they're a wee bit discounted. Um, but unfortunately, MPB did not have it in stock. So Wex was the nearest, was the next one. Brilliant price, brilliant guarantee, warranty, blah, 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 blah. Um, so yeah, highly recommend it. And let's see what damage it does tonight. Okay, so that's darkness here now, and it's absolutely stunning. There's still a tiny bit of cloud here and there. You can see behind me that the northern lights is a wee bit there. It's just a bit of a green bulge just now, but the stats look like they're going uh, down later. So that'll be later, later, so probably an hour. Um, but Orion's looking really nice, and I'm go so I'm going to look south and capture Orion, Jupiter, Pleiades, all that jazz. Uh, in the south just now whilst we wait for the northern lights to maybe kick off hopefully other than that but yeah i just want to capture this scene with orion maybe venus as well might creep into the frame um, and then obviously the milky way core later on in the night yeah so we'll see what happens with the northern lights but other than that i'm just going to jump about the road for a bit nice and mild as well it's only about like one two degrees so it's really really nice had a nice meal in the van watched some tv watched some youtube Oh, there's a car in the distance. The good thing about this road, it's really open, it's really far, like both ends. So you can, I can see a, a car about two miles away, so it's easy enough to kind of move out my way and move all the photography equipment. So it is pretty safe. Although I see people on my photography talks and stuff, they're always wondering, that's dangerous on the road. I'm like, I can see something on the road about two miles away. So I've got plenty, plenty of notice to change, which I'll do now. <laughs> It's scary to think that we've only got two more kind of months. It's scary to think we've only got about two more months until the summertime. So we've only got March, April, and a tiny part of May maybe. And that is it for the season. It comes around really, really quick winter. And it's just because you're, you know, so busy doing everything. Personal life as well. And it just, you know, it really ramps up and it really speeds up. So it's always this time of season. You're like, oh, crap, uh, there's not long left. So plus when you taking consideration the moon phases you know a bright moon will be in the sky for you know a week and a half two weeks of the month so that's already halving your month so realistically we've probably only got you know of two months two weeks of dark skies you've only got maybe like one month left of dark skies and that is it depending on the weather and scottish weather is not the greatest so yeah you really have to kind of take the opportunities whilst whilst they're there so the first picture of the night um, is quite a nice one actually. I'm capturing like the, uh, the Cassiopeia Andromeda area with Venus and it goes all the way down to like the northwest and you can see a wee bit of aurora in the far right of the frame and you know the road is just kind of leading into the, the picture. There is a bit of high cloud rolling in, in here and there but for a first shot it looks really really good. I might have to do a panorama because it's such a wide angle shot. But yeah, I'm very happy with the first image of the night. Um, Orion is currently non-existent, don't know where Orion is. And the, the Northern Lights is just still a bulge. My settings for the image was 25 seconds, ISO 3200. And I played it with the Star Glow filter just to get that Venus popping really nicely. Trying to get this Orion shot is proving very, very difficult. Every time I get the camera out, because I see the whole constellation between the clouds, by the time I set up the equipment, 
uh, more clouds roll in. It's very, very annoying, and it just seems to be this one area of the sky that the clouds just keep going through, whereas the rest of the sky is pretty clear. But we are expecting a band of high clouds to come over for a couple of hours, and I can see it kind of building, so I think the, the forecast is bang on. So I'll probably have like a, a couple hours kip and pretty much just forfeit this Orion shot. But yeah, I'll go for a kip for a few hours and wake up for hopefully early in the morning, try and get the Milky Way core. And there's also an ISS Passover, which will be kind of going right over the, uh, the location that I'm looking at. And that's at like 4.50 something, 4.53. So I'll set an alarm at like half four so I can get out and uh, set up and get ready for that. So we'll see if that happens and see if it's clear. So I had about uh, an hour's nap in the car, just looked outside the window and it's absolutely crystal clear skies. So I've just been kind of going up and down the road, capturing Orion, capturing the north view of the Milky Way. Absolutely stunning. Some of the, you know, some of the darkest skies you can get in Scotland. This is like slap bang in the middle of the Highlands. So Orion really does pop. Wow. I'll show you the view. Absolutely beautiful. Jupiter's still beside Taurus. So that looks really, really bright in the pictures. Wow. Love nights like these. So yeah, it's 11 o'clock at night now and the Milky Way core doesn't rise to like 3, 4 plus that ISS so I'll come back in the night for that, I'll get a few hours kip but also I just looked at the Northern Lights stats it's kind of been like a yo-yo it's going really deep down really but uh, high up deep down, high up uh, with the BZ line so I'll keep an eye out on the Northern Horizon uh, to see that, so it's just, you never get sleep doing these nights, it's just you always have to be on alert So it's 3.15 in the morning, uh, I thought just to peek my head out the van to see what the skies were like and how the Milky Way core was looking. It's still a wee bit under the horizon, it's still early in the season so it's not till the very end of the night uh, that we'll get the Milky Way core. But if you look to the north, there's a lovely aurora arc just now, uh, so I'm just capturing that over the over the roadside and just I might dot about and see what else I can kind of capture. But this roadside shot's really, really nice, and Cassiopeia is just above it, so it looks really, really cool. Um, and yes, I'm just literally photographing this whilst it's there, because why not? And uh, if we get some pillars, bonus. For sure, I'm lucky to have Scotland as a home. Literally, this is an hour and a half drive, and it's like, I think it's, well, it's Bartle 2, and it's just amazing. Nice and easy access. Access to the Northern Lights. 
Wow, beautiful. So it's five o'clock now and we've missed the ISS flyover due to cloud. There was a big bit of cloud exactly where the ISS was going to be. So we missed that but thankfully the top of the Milky Way core is now above the horizon. I've just been waiting around for about 15 minutes for a gap in the clouds which is kind of looking like now. So I've put the Sigma 40mm 1.4 onto my Ioptron. It's it's tracking, I've done a foreground and there's quite a big gap in the sky now so I'm just going to kind of press it to go, hold on, there we go, so it's going now for 1 minute 30 seconds, I always just seem to stick with 1 minute 30 seconds, it just seems to be a nice sweet spot for me, so I've done the foreground with obviously the sky tracker off and then now with the sky tracker on, the exact same exposure for the sky. So hopefully you enjoy the images, it's been quite a nice wee video, we've done quite a lot actually, there's been jumping about here and there, photographing different things, so very happy with the video, and we'll see what we do next time.